Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course on the troubleshooting process. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the troubleshooting theory. We're going to find out from the very beginning to the very end what is the process we should go through when trying to troubleshoot a problem. This will be especially important for the A plus exam, but what you'll find is that you'll use this troubleshooting theory throughout your entire career, and you'll even find ways to use this troubleshooting theory that have nothing to do with computers. So some good basic material we're going to cover in this particular module. Before we dive into the details of the troubleshooting process, let's talk about the troubleshooting process from beginning to end at a very high level. Whenever we're trying to determine what's going on inside a machine, we need to really be sure that we identify the problem. What we're usually doing here is asking a lot of questions. We'll dive into this in a moment. Well, also, the second step is to, now that we've identified the problem, is figure out what the probable cause is. What could be causing this problem to begin with? We need to test the theory come up with some ideas about how we can really tell if the idea that we have about the problem is really related to the issue. You can establish a plan of action now to actually resolve the problem and implement the solution. This becomes really useful in large environments. Once we have implemented the solution, did it actually fix anything? Let's make sure that the system functionality has now been restored. And lastly, we need to document what happened with this particular issue, the actions that we performed, and what the final outcomes were. Graphically, this is what this process starts with, which was identifying the problem, establishing a theory. We're going to test the theory and evaluate the results. If we didn't actually fix the problem, we're going to go half back to figuring out what really was the problem, and let's come up with some other ideas about how we can fix it. If we really did fix it, then we need to figure out how can we roll out this fix and then verify that the fix actually worked. And at that point, we can document everything, and we know that now the problem is resolved. Let's dive into each one of these things and really see exactly what we have to do to each step along the way. You get a phone call, somebody stops by your desk, and they say, I have a problem. I need, to, I need some help with solving this particular problem that I'm having. So the first step along the way is to identify what the problem really is. And one of the best ways of determining really what the problem is is to ask questions. Well, this is something where we need details. Did you see a message pop up? What were you really experiencing? Was it a slowdown? What specifically was slow? Did your mouse slow down or the entire computer slow down? Did you hear anything? Were there any beeps? Did it make any noises? Those are the types of things that can cause you to ask questions about what's going on and, and really drill down into the issue further. Another important thing to consider is, what's the last thing that changed? Was there an upgrade that occurred just before this problem started? Was a particular application installed? Well, did you just come in from the weekend and turn your computer on? Maybe now you need to talk with the people who manage the network and the configuration settings on those desktops and find out, was anything changed over the weekend? And very often, we can go right to the logs. We may not even have to require the customer tell us what's going on. We can look at the logs of that computer and determine, was some new software installed? Were there changes made to the operating system? Whenever you're always talking about critical information and making changes to anything, we're going through, going through this process and identifying the problem and looking at the computer. But when you go through this entire process of troubleshooting, having a backup of this becomes very important. So even if at this point you're getting ready to make changes to a computer, you should already start thinking about ways to make sure that the current computing system is backed up if you should ever need to restore it. If you like our online course and you'd like to help support ProfessorMesser.com, you might want to consider purchasing a downloadable version of our course. You can get HD video, audio files, and much more by visiting our website at ProfessorMesser.com slash get A+. Another good way to gather information is to look inside the computer, look on the outside of the computer, do a visual inspection. Make sure that a lot of dust hasn't accumulated around the fan, for instance. Check the connections. Somebody's complaining of a mouse and a keyboard. Is the mouse and keyboard plugged in properly? Do you have good connection on those USB ports? Look at the hardware and software configuration. Make sure that the way this device is configured is the same as all of the other devices. You may be able to find a lot of information in your device manager. If somebody's experiencing a hardware failure, you'll certainly see it pop up very clearly in the device manager. Of course, 
We have videos in this course that tell you how to use that device manager to find those things. Ultimately, you may want to flip open the vendor's documentation and see what they recommend for certain power settings, for certain settings on the video, or anything else dealing with the hardware. Now that we've made our list of all the things that were problematic, a list of the symptoms the customer was experiencing, we've asked them questions about what they did to have this particular problem come about. We need to think about this issue and establish a theory of what it might be. What could be causing this particular problem then? One of the best places to begin is with the most obvious then. Are there any lights or noises or sounds? If somebody's getting an error message that says, I'm out of disk space, the most obvious thing is that you're low on disk space. Those are the easy ones. It's the ones that are a little more difficult we have to drill down into. But before you begin getting into the more complex issues, start with the most obvious ones. Check out lights, error messages, things in the logs, things that are just going to really point out and, and shine a, a light on exactly where the problem is occurring. You may have to make a decision about, is the issue this person's getting a hardware problem? Or perhaps is this related to software? Sometimes it's very cut and dry. Very often, you can't exactly narrow it down to a piece of hardware or software. For instance, they may be having problems with their mouse. Is the problem really with the mouse driver or perhaps the software that comes with the mouse? Or perhaps they're having a physical problem with that piece of hardware. Not always obvious, but always something to consider. So let's make a list of every possible cause it could be. It could be mouse hardware. It could be mouse software. It could be the cable connecting into the back of the computer. It could be the port that the mouse plugs into in the computer. It could be the drivers for the USB port that's used for the mouse. There's so many different things now just in a single mouse problem, but you should list out every single one of those. Now, as you're listing those out, you may find that this is a video problem. You may be working on a hard drive problem. And in any of these cases, you may come across an idea that this problem could be really bad, and we might have to replace a piece of hardware here. We may not know it's bad hardware yet. We still have to do our troubleshooting. We still have to go through the process. But at this point, we may want to consider some contingencies. If this really is a bad hard drive problem, and I'm going to have to order more equipment, maybe I should start working right now on that. Maybe I should put in the order, and I'll start working on this over the next day. If I really do find out it's a hardware problem, I know my order is already coming. If this is not a hardware problem, I'll just cancel the order. So think about those contingencies. Sometimes there's money on the line. The faster you can get this resolved, the better off you're going to be financially for your organization. So always keep those things in mind.